Thank you very much, Professor Bacon Sean, uh, for your sharing on how to use data to analyze specific districts and groups in Hong Kong. Our second speaker of today is Mendel Wong. He's the co founder and co chair of Citizen Science Asia. Citizen Science Asia is a community and organization established in response to the lack of a unified voice for Asia in matters related to citizen science. The organization aims to connect regional citizen science communities and help them share their stories. Mendo is also a board member for the Citizen Science Global Partnership and external advisor board member for CS Track. He is also a technology executive in the finance industry. He is passionate about facilitating solutions that will create positive impacts and experiences. Let's welcome Mendel. His talk is about really knowing the community with citizen science. Mendel, please. Okay, well, they bring that up. Thanks, Yvette. Um, and thanks for the organizer for having me here today. So I think the first question probably most people have on their mind is actually, what is citizen science? So just before I get into that, um, as my intro had said, so I'm the founder um, and current co-chair for CitizenScience.Asia. Um, it is a nonprofit organization uh, registered in Hong Kong to work for the Asia region to really bring citizen science um, to people to help advocate um, and teach um, and promote uh, its work um, for in the region and across the world. So in a second, I'll bring up a few slides to really let you know what citizen science is about and how it relates to what we're talking about today. All right. timing myself, given we don't have a lot of time given. So what is uh, citizen science? So I think everyone in the room here probably understands what science is, but just to use that as the basis to give an explanation, this is our citizen science Asia's um, sort of explanation of what it is. So science is uh, defined as a shared process involving observation and experimentation to arrive at answers to questions or solutions to problems. We can sort of further refine citizen science Asia to be, or citizen science to be um, sort of these four boxes I listed below. Um, from the context of problem definition, it's really to help integrate scientific culture and education with indigenous knowledge um, for method methodical and comprehensive approach. Um, in terms of as a problem evidence, which is a big part of what citizen science can offer, it helps to uh, focus on the easy participation by anyone, anywhere, at any time, so that we have more inclusive and higher resolution of data. Um, from a solution standpoint, ultimately, uh, it really gives a different and new approach, which helps promote collaboration in the discovery and action uh, for transparency, understanding, and engagement. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in upcoming slides. And finally, I think ultimately we want to be able to get to some sort of solution outcome. And citizen science really helps to emphasize and encourage science uh, for public good leading to more humane conclusions and actions. So that's the basic definition of what it is. Hopefully we'll talk a little bit more and help you understand uh, what it's about. I think from the perspective of different stakeholders, these are sort of the four classic ones that we usually uh, put in perspective of. I think for the primary, and again, upcoming slides will go into this a little bit more in different aspects, but if you're an educator, I think citizen science really offers uh, a way to introduce STEM skills with really active hands-on um, experience for its students, which is obviously something that's very important to a lot of people at the moment in terms of encouraging more STEM and how do you get people interested in that space. Um, it also helps to reward students with immediate feedback in the immersive learning experience. Um, I guess if you're a researcher, which is probably um, a lot more contextual for this audience here, um, it really helps to expand the scope and the research of observations by making it, um, it, the, the researcher having access to a much larger set of contributors. Um, it also helps to leverage different volunteers for various phases of the scientific uh, process, namely in the analytical task, uh, which involve a lot of pattern recognition, which AI itself may or may not be able to help with, despite sort of a large uh, data set of machine learning. 
Um, even more importantly, from a policymaker standpoint, I think it's really important because it helps to provide a way to engage and build trust um, by involving the local communities um, and stakeholders. Uh, it really helps to account for any sort of local expertise and experience, which traditionally may not necessarily be in, included in uh, traditional surveys or studies. Finally, I think um, very importantly for the public, uh, and this is sort of where the whole citizen um, part of the citizen science comes in, it really helps to enable people to, or empower them to be able to help contribute towards um, solutions, towards things like in, uh, the sustainable development goals, which I'll talk a little bit more about, and generally more community dialogues. Um, it really helps to um, enable people to understand their surrounding environment a little bit better through its involvement. And finally, in, in a sort of very colloquial way, it also helps to provide an activity which allows people to spend quality time with, with people while doing something educational. So I'll go through a few different aspects of citizen science as far as how they impact these different domains. First of all, I'm just going to touch on knowledge management. So if you start on the, the far left here, everyone coming through school would understand, traditionally, we learn through textbook learning. We're taught what to believe in, what to know, how things work, why they work that way in terms of how we digest um, knowledge. It's just really distributed. But as we go further to the right, um, really we're coming to the space which I already touched on in terms of immersive learning or immediate feedback and an understanding. It's really in people discovering knowledge for themselves. You really want people to hands-on touch things, um, ask the right question, and figure out what it is they want to know, why it works a certain way. So I think through that process, as you get older through university, obviously you go through like research process, which allow you to do that. But the idea here, like with STEM as an example, you're trying to really start that much earlier on so people are not just told what to believe in, but really work it out for themselves why they want to um, absorb certain knowledge. So you want to go through that knowledge discovery process. And as everyone understands with uh, crowdsourced data, big data, a lot of it now comes down to needing of skill sets that really um, allow us to be able to handle that additional information. So obviously big data analytics is a big thing. Um, so it really helps to start promoting down the cycle, um, needing to develop further skill sets. And finally, I think with people asking questions fundamentally at the individual level, at societal level, you also start getting into a different mindset of not just being told how things work, how do you solve problems, or you wait for a solution. It really starts to build empowerment and innovation. So, from a knowledge management standpoint, I think the idea is just to uh, progress society in a way that really helps with people working out for themselves solutions. Um, as I mentioned, SDG is sort of a one um, big area which we talk a lot about in citizen science because UN Environment has worked very closely with us to actually establish the global partnership, which I'm uh, on the board of, as mentioned. So just really quickly in terms of time, I'll just go through a few things here. If people don't know, the Sustainable Development Goals is the target for 20, 30, seven years from now to figure out a lot of problems around the world. There are 17 goals as they're listed in color boxes down on the uh, right there. Um, they're measured by 169 targets through 244 indicators. But number aside, the idea is that that's a lot of information that needs to be um, addressed or measured. Um, and one of the findings is that citizen science can actually help monitor 33% of these indicators, which is a lot. Um, especially in um, places like Asia and Africa, where only 20% of the SDG indicators actually have measurable um, components at the moment. From a data and policy standpoint, I'm just going to talk about this from a UN World Data Forum standpoint, more, much more from a global nature. Um, the constant theme over the last um, eight years since the forum was put together always comes up is the lack of trust in data. So obviously, this is the World Data Forum. These are all the world powers talking about the survey data. Um, but there is a fundamental trust from people about what comes out of this data set in terms of policy. So citizen science really helps to mitigate that because you're actually involving the people to help gather that data so people understand where the data is coming from, why it's put together, and therefore the uh, conclusions that come out of that. Finally, I think the big part that leads to today's discussion is really around community engagement. So as I already touched on, it's sort of a natural conclusion. It's really around what, what does community engagement mean? I would break it down in terms of a few different um, level of uh, engagement and phases. Really, you want to get the community interested. You need to make sure they understand what we're discussing. You want to make sure you get their support and buy-in. You want to make sure then you get to the ultimate holy grail of them providing input or feedback, and finally getting them to actually action based on the conclusions. So citizen science projects, if they're proactively designed and measured um, in, in the right way, really allow citizens to get involved in that process to build some of these aspects in the engagement. 
And the diagram there just really gives sort of a, a scale of how people can get involved from just being a data point, a measure um, aspect, all the way through the helping create the project by um, discussing what the uh, issues they want to look at. Um, just before we close here in terms of time, just a few examples here just to get a sense um, for the later discussion panel. Um, these are not projects I manage or have direct relationship. I just went online to figure these out. But these sort of give a context as to citizen science projects re relate social matters. There's a lot of projects relate environmental, biodiversity, and such. But these are a few examples here around the world. In the Netherlands, they had a citizen science-related project which really helped identify health-related themes um, affecting poor neighborhoods. Um, the main um, benefit there had been to raise the perception of individual health um, amongst the actual scientists who were involved. Um, there's a housing assessment that was done in rural Georgia and the US. Um, it really helped to identify characteristics and prevalence of the housing problems that were um, in the area. And I think one of the main findings was it helped really build new connections between the, um, the, the local leaders and the residents, um, sort of creating dialogues amongst them while the project was going on. Um, and also, finally, the other two just really similar examples in London and Tasmania, which really were um, getting citizens in a local community involved with trying to figure out data points for the question that was being answered and having very serendipitous um, outcomes as far as the benefits of having these dialogues that are happening with the actual local people rather than just sort of a paper survey sent out there and there was no conversation whatsoever. So that's actually the conclusion uh, in terms of just giving you a quick background on what citizen science is about. Um, feel free to um, catch me after the, this so we can talk a little bit more about what citizen science Asia is about and if you want to know more about citizen science in general. Thank you.